All right, I am back. I am Beak Supreme, and this is video intended for the Beak Robotics YouTube channel. As I show how to uh, how to make my uh, SNES Pie Box uh, project, and I just really gotta find the package for these white flat top LEDs. Um, I've got other colors: yellow, orange, um, red, um, just whatever. Uh, but I need to use a resistor to get the voltage down on those and uh, so then I can begin using those. Now. Ah, here it is. Here's my packaging. These white LEDs and uh, I got my resistors. Now, I don't know much about the specific com components of the electronics. These are obviously resistors. Um, I don't know these are some of the weakest resistors that I that I you know uh, felt like buying because I didn't know exactly how much resistance is needed to drop the voltage down. Since I'm only going from about three volts to about two volts needed, um, or I can go from 3.6 down to 2.2 or whatever. Uh, not a very big voltage drop, maybe a volt or a volt and a half needs to be reduced or you know needs to re be reduced by about a volt or maybe a volt and a half so I got the weakest value of resistors and um, anyway now um, I showed you in my previous video uh, how I did this and you just, well uh, that I did it okay what you do is you take a ribbon cable uh, this is a floppy drive cable um, it can be an IDE um, well this is part of IDE integrated drive electronics but it can be a hard drive cable which will be a little bit wider it'll be um, 40 pins total this is 34 this gives you 17 rows or whatever um, uh, 17 in length uh, now a hard drive cable will give you 20 in length now if you can get a hold of a SCSI cable uh, they they might have more pins to them they might have more pins and then you can fit more lights on there and these are great because this forms a type of a light socket um, this forms a type of a light socket while at the same time um, it um, it has all your wiring inside so what you do is here's what you do you just take your um, you, kind of define how you're going to wire it. Here's an orientation pin there. I'm going to take the longer pin, oh, I forget if the anode or cathode on the LED, but anyway, the longer one, and you set it in there and you orient it like this toward you. Okay, and that fits in there. Alright, now, they also have a bit of color coding. This one is, is really worn off, or they didn't apply it very much, and it should be kind of a pink-red color and it shows pin number one on here. There's what we do. We take these two wires here and we strip them. And I need to get, I really need to get me a wire stripper, but I gotta wait till my next paycheck. And uh, anyway, we just strip these wires here and you kind of guess how they're gonna have it wired up. There's an orientation uh, here. Um, uh, the red here, it's supposed to be red or pinkish, it tells you pin number one. Sometimes it might be marked on here, but I believe it is pin number one there, which is down here in the bottom corner, I believe, because we take our battery and put the positive on there. Yes. And that matches up. So that's pin number one there. And it's the same as, here's the positive put on there. Obviously this works. If you turn it the other way around, it does not work. So that's how you know um, that you got it done right. So this color, this little reddish color uh, marked wire operates this pin right there in the in what would look like the upper right hand corner. Okay? So we just literally check all these. We just take it check it like this obviously it works okay 
Now we take another one, uh, another set of these, and, and you know they're in alternating pairs. You know, they alternate back and forth. And um, you just take a another another uh, pair of pins here, or I mean wires, which will go to the pins. Strip them. Okay. And this is small wire. I think it's like 28 gauge, or something like that. About as thin as phone wire. All right. Now I believe I guess now. This one should be the positive, this one should be the negative, and we'll check it with our battery. Well, it'd help if we move the LED down over there to the next position. And yes, it's correct. So, starting with the far left, positive, and it goes over, next is a negative. And then the third one over will be a positive, the fourth one will be a negative. So every odd number will be positive, every even number will be negative. And you just take this again and make sure to move our LED over another position and you just do this all the way across and I'll show you why we do this why I do this anyway, I came up with this, I don't think anybody is doing this yet uh, definitely not in conjunction with the Raspberry Pi uh, box project not that I've seen on YouTube anyway and uh, I'm fairly active on there Search it for stuff. We're going to check this. Yep, it works. Alright, move our LED over again. Just keep it the long, the long lead pointed toward us. Toward this here. We're going to go in the fourth pin. Or the fourth position here. Grab us another pair of wires. And remember that the positive is always toward your right and the negative is toward your left. That's how the manufacturer oriented this cable and this whole system because the because the drives like because this is basically a ribbon cable that connects uh, a disk drive to a controller and all this has to be consistent uh, for universal plug up and interoperability and all that. So we're going to take this here. Now if you wonder why I'm so intelligent, that's because I don't spend my free time watching Grey's Anatomy or American Idol. Okay, and I, you got to understand, I'm not special. Anybody could do what I do. It's just that they won't. That's what differentiates them from me. Here we go. It works. <clears throat> Alright, move it down another position. Grab another pair of wires. This is just simple stuff. Connect wires. Count pins. I mean, people can count, right? I mean, like, the, like mathematics is, is taught in school, right? Okay. Like, I, I learned how to wire a house when I was eight years old. Now, I didn't know entirely how to wire everything in a house, but I was taught the basic principles of wiring electrical outlets when I was eight years old. I mean, I was around people that knew how to do stuff. And that's how I grew up. You know, I learned in science, you know, in science class. Okay, I got this on here wrong. So we'll test it here. We'll flip the battery. Yep, there it is again. And you just do this all the way across until your final result ends up like this. And I twisted, you might have seen in the last video, I twisted some of these together. And intentionally. Now the reason why I'm doing this project, this is the top of a Super Nintendo game cartridge. What this will sit in here, this will emulate the function of recessed lighting while at the same time track lighting. And this will be mounted up in here and hot glued and I'll take popsicle or craft sticks um, and just set them in here and recess them. Now this, these LED lead pins will be cut down in length. They're not going to be that long in the final product. Um, and then you'll just be able to plug in LEDs here. Now the reason why I got two different circuits in this is because of the two different voltages. One volt, uh, I'm, I'm going to use around three volts as my main input voltage. And now the cool colors such as blue, green, uh, ultraviolet, and white, uh, they also have uh, shorter wavelengths. Um, Except for white, it's all colors mixed. 
Well, even then, it, it averaged out to be a shorter wavelength because green and blue are in there, and there's only one red, but then there's a green and a blue, and they both use three volt. Anyway, uh, the shorter wavelength, which results in cool colors, like green and blue, for example, um, and, and, and purple, if you were to do that, or ultraviolet, they use more voltage. They use around 3.3 average. Uh, they can go up to 4 volts, okay? That is what I'm going to call high voltage. Now, all this stuff is low voltage, like, like less than 5 volts. So it's all low voltage lighting. But within that, we got what I would call high and low. Your high is going to be around your 3 volt, or maybe 3.5 volts. Uh, your low voltage is going to be um, 2.4 to maybe two volts, okay, around two volts, okay? So there's about a volt of difference between high and low. Now, your longer wavelength colors, which are lower frequency and they happen to be warmer, red, orange, and yellow, use less voltage. Uh, ultra, well, I'm sorry, infrared even, infrared is even lower wavelength, or longer wavelength, lower frequency, around 800 nanometers and 900 nanometers and they use even less voltage. You're talking about 1.2 volts average. Like, like 1.6 volt maximum is what you handle. So it's very low voltage. So I'm going to have two circuits. The odd number pins can be set up on 3 volt. Now the even number of pins can be set up on an alternative voltage which would be my... okay. The odd number pins can be for my high voltage of 3 volts. The even number of pins going across um, can be for my low voltage, which would be about 2 volts. Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have these two different circuits, and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put a common resistor on one particular circuit. Uh, this right here is my even. Let's say um, I could put a resistor that would bring my voltage down from 3 volts to let's say 2 volts. Okay, and just connect a resistor in this circuit. So then I would know that my even would be my low voltage and then my odd would be my high voltage of 3 volts because 3 is an odd number, 2 is an even number. Have it set up like that, easy to remember. And, just, and then I can mark it with colors or whatever. And then just make sure that, um, and then you have your positive and then your negative, and just make sure that I know which is which, and then I can plug in my, uh, my LEDs, and just, if I want it to be orange, put, all, you know, put a bunch of orange LEDs in the even number pins for one particular color, or, and then if I want blue to be my alternative color, I put in some blues in the uh, odd number of pins, and the reason why I'm doing that is for, you know, I mean, one color is nice, and you can rig this all up to be one homogeneous color if you want. I mean, and just wire all these together. If you want it to be green or, or yellow or red or white or ultraviolet or whatever color you want, just remember how you're wiring it. Okay? So, but I'm going to go for a two tone because I got a single pole double throw switch. And so what I'd probably want to go for is white and and, um, and and blue. That would be nice. So if you want it to be a nice blue color, you know, you, throw the, you put the switch in that position or you want a white so you can see your board really good. Put that in another position. Now in that case, I won't need a resistor because white and blue both use the same voltage, around 3 or 3.6 volts. They'll handle 3.6 volts pretty well you know, for using rechargeable batteries. Uh, 3 volts is very easy to come by. It's just two alkaline batteries um, because alkaline puts out 1.5 volts per cell and um, and then uh, rechargeables put out 1.2 volts per cell. Um, but now when you're mixing voltages, that's when you need a uh, uh, you know, between warm colors and cool colors, that's when you'll need a resistor. Uh, what I was going to do is um, white and ultraviolet. So you got your white so you can see your board and everything's all good when you want to display what the Raspberry Pi naturally looks like. But, you know, if you got some, um, if you got some, um, 
ultraviolet, or if you got some fluorescent paint or glow in the dark paint, you might want some ultraviolet uh, light on there. And, uh, you know, for some black light effects. And so you can switch for that. Now, I got about 13 minutes left on here. Now, at Walmart, I've been trying to get paint all through the month of October. And last week or whatever, I finally got what I was looking for. It is pearl white paint. It took me a month to get this stuff. They sold it, but like they didn't restock the shelves. Um, that's this here. Uh, because, you know, I figure white is a nice, good neutral color, you know, when you're going to use colored light. But also, you might want a little bit of sparkle. So, you know, a slight glitter effect here, not a very strong glitter effect, you know. Uh, or if you just want to use regular white, you know, to show off your color, that'd look good. Now this here, I thought this is going to be white. It looks like white, right? Yeah, it turns clear. And um, you, so you got glitter, extra glitter effects in there. You can do that. I showed in some of my previous videos. Um, I got uh, glow in the dark green and yellow paint, glow in the dark orange. I got uh, fluorescent blue and purple. And you can get fluorescent yellow, green, and orange also. Okay, so I'm doing this, and this is going to be mounted up in there, and it's going to shine down. So I'm going to have to do uh, at least three cartridge heights, because this whole lighting system will take up at least um, at least three, you know, it'll take up at least a whole cartridge. Now, just to let you know, here's what three Super Nintendo game cartridges looks like when it's stacked up. The Raspberry Pi will occupy two cartridges. Um... The third could be occupied by a lighting system. Now, there is the possible. Oh, now there is oh, oh, Now there is the possibility that the lighting system might have to occupy four cartridges. Um, and there's reasons for that. Maybe because of viewing angle, and make sure you get your lighting effects properly. Or if you were to, to put a battery pack all in here, the battery pack would would take up nearly the thickness of one cartridge and you have the lighting system and all that. So here's what four Super Nintendo game cartridges looks like when it's stacked up. Okay. Uh, now actually it'll be a little bit shorter than this because you see a gap here. That's because of this height is a little bit taller. And you'll cut them off of three of these cartridges and leave one full height. So the end result will be a little bit shorter than this. Uh, you should not need any more than four Super Nintendo game cartridges um, for this pro uh, for that for for your lighting system and everything. And like I said, you know, and like I said in the previous video, if you don't want to have any lighting system and you just want it for the Raspberry Pi, two cartridges is enough. Okay, three might be enough if you're going to do a lighting system. But see, my my project is divided into two major sections. The month of August, I was trying to think of, oh man, I'd love to have a Super, or a, uh, a Super Nintendo game cartridge as a Raspberry Pi box. Okay, well the month of September, I was actually working on it because my previous attempt in, in August with the Super Nintendo game cartridge idea was very, very low quality and it was, it was terrible. Um, then in the month of September, it became a reality. I made it, and, you know, I'm pretty much done with it. I was going to put lights in there, but, you know, no. I'm going to save that for another project. Um, and this, and, and you know, it was in early, it was in late September or early October of this year, 2012. I came up with a more simplified design. I put my Raspberry Pi on here earlier, and I was watching movies on it back in the bedroom. And they're on a different TV. And this has enough height, really, I believe. I think this will be adequate. I don't think you'll have to stand up any additional height. Uh, this works out great. And in the Sega cartridge, uh, cartridge that this, I'd like to do a Sega cartridge uh, Pi box. But that's going to be a little more difficult uh, because the Super Nintendo is easier to work with, apparently. It's a little bit too big, but it's easier to work with. Uh, oh, crap. I don't got my... I need to find in this static here, my, my Sega cartridge I was working on, where I had different uh, mirror mounts and it didn't work out so good. Uh, but, but I landed on a more successful approach with the uh, Super Nintendo game cartridge and all that, and it's a little more square shaped. Now, what I thought about doing 
when I go and stack a bunch of these is cut out and not use these sides and actually use clear acrylic um, at least on three sides maybe I can do it all four, I don't know, but I'm going to use it on at least one side here and so, so you can see the Raspberry Pi and all that and the, then the top and then anywhere where you guys see this plastic probably painted a sparkly black color, uh, like a pearl black which will be, uh, it'll be good um, it'll contrast well, but you know, there's all kinds of different colors you can paint these things. I mean, you know, if you want to build you one, that's fine. You can like do whatever and all that. The two major areas of development are the Raspberry Pi box itself, which I'm almost mastered that. I mean, I am developing some more ideas and all that to make things a little more efficient, uh, to produce a little bit easier to do, a little bit cheaper or cost effective or more cost efficient I'm thinking up all these ideas and uh, but my challenge I'm working on right now in the month of October 2012 is the lighting system and I believe I you know came up on a more simplified idea I came up with this in the uh, uh, about a week ago well almost a week ago anyway um, around October um, 19th or 20th, something like that. Well, the, uh, I just have to look at the date on my other video. Um, and, uh, because I, I, I didn't want to do any more soldering than, than I really had to, which I got about seven minutes left on here. I'm going to do some soldering because I need to just make this easier to deal with. So I'm going to cut me some wire. Okay. And uh, make sure the length is right here. And uh, match up the length on this. All right, you can actually hear that cut. Split this down the middle. All right, now we're going to strip them. And this is solid speaker wire. This is 24 gauge. And it's solid wire. It's um, not the stranded wire that I was dealing with. Now I got some uh, right here. Keep stuff from shorting out. This is uh, heat shrink tubing. I'm cutting a couple pieces here. I only really got the red left. I, I had a bunch of black. I need to order some more. It's been years since I ordered this. And I just got to strip this here. And a lot of this stuff is not hard to do. I mean, like, you can kind of teach yourself. You just got to have a mind, you know, you got to have a brain that processes more than just how to do a fad. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got you to gotta think, you know, life is more than, than just trying to be the next fad. Okay. Um, we're going to leave our white as negative. Split these here, separate these, and uh, you know what? Do it like I should have done. Okay, split these. All right, we're going to split these even more. Yeah. And uh, I'm just got a few minutes left, so I got to do this before the video is over with. Just in case the video gets done before I'm done with this, I am Beak Supreme. This video is for the Beagle Box YouTube channel. Okay, this is all stripped. This one is going to be stripped. Now, it's easier to strip this solid wire because you don't got to worry about ripping strands. Alright. Now, on positives, we will put uh, heat shrink tubing on our positives so that we will identify them. Okay. Then you slide this heat shrink tubing on down there. Uh, you know, I need, to, I need to do this some more. I need to split this more. And I'm working on these projects here. If people like them, if I become popular enough or, su or successful enough, maybe I can actually start up the Beeklebotics Megacorp. And, uh, all right, let's 
a little bit more because see the heat from our soldering iron will actually shrink this. That's our, that's what our the concern is going to be. Okay, we got a match for positive and um, okay, Put some solder on this. Now I'm fairly good at soldering. I'm not like the best at it. Solder this one. Make sure. Okay. Uh, I'm confident there are people who could solder better than me. Okay. But you know I can do this. So. Uh, Take your positive, match it up. And we're going to just some neighbors over there that are loud. Some arms, get simple hooking this together. Yeah, it's totally silent in my apartment. And it's 12.07 p.m. on uh, October 28th right now. Got all kind of projects I need to finish up on. Doing my Maniac Mansion uh, uh, videos. May have to start another one of these videos. Check how much time I got left on this video. Alright, I only got two minutes on this video. I am Beak Supreme, and this video is for the Beak Robotics YouTube channel. And I will make another video and solder the rest of this, and then I will quit for the night. Okay, until next time, you need to go pet some.